Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Katie. And together, we're Cheds Up. Today, we're going to try teaching you a little bit about supersymmetry. Now, before we get into supersymmetry, we have to cover a few basics first. Namely, when I talk about symmetry, what do I mean? If you take a look at this piece of paper, I can show you. Give me a second to draw on some dots. And voila, we have a beautiful square of dots. We want to try to find the symmetries in this shape. The way we do this is by looking for things that we can do to the square that will cause it to still look the same. For example, if we were to rotate the square 90 degrees, it would still look like the same square. This is called rotational symmetry. This shape also has another kind of symmetry, reflexive symmetry. If I draw a dotted line here, okay, if you were to flip everything over that line, we would still end up with the same square. Same thing if I flipped over this line, over this line, over this line. You get the point. Brace yourself for some science words. A symmetry is therefore an invariance under a transformation. But really, all this means is that something looks the same is invariant when we do something to it, a transformation. If we apply a 90 degree rotation to the square, our transformation, it still looks like a square. Okay, so I think we've got the basic idea of a symmetry down. But what does this have to do with particle physics? Well, modern day particle physics is built around something called the standard model, which is a theory that describes what particles should exist and how they should interact. It looks something like this. Each one of these boxes represents a different elementary particle that is flitting around the universe. There are a lot of different particles here, but the important thing that I want you to notice is that it can be broken down into two main groups. On the left, you have the fermions, which make up matter, and on the right, you have the bosons, which carry forces. Though you probably can't tell from this picture, the standard model has a ton of symmetries. It's one of the reasons physicists like it so much. Physicists love symmetries. These symmetries help to answer a lot of questions about how particle physics works. But we still have a few nagging questions that the standard model just can't answer. So what do we do? Introduce a new symmetry. And what should we call it? Supersymmetry! Because it's super. If we go back to our original square, I can show you how I like to think about it. This square and the rotations and reflections we did before represent the standard model. By introducing supersymmetry, we effectively double the standard model. It's kind of like doing this. See, we have another invariance. The Sharpie has bled through, so I can flip the whole page over and still get a square. The actual idea behind supersymmetry isn't too hard to follow either, although understanding the motivation is a bit more complicated. The idea is that for every fermion, Remember the fermions, the guys who make up matter? And the bosons are the ones who carry forces? Okay, so for every fermion, there is a boson counterpart, and for every boson, there is a fermion counterpart. By requiring this, we double the amount of particles that there should be. The reason this is an idea that physicists like is because it helps to answer a lot of questions we still have about the universe, including what dark matter might be, why the Higgs boson, the particle that gives stuff mass, is so light, and how the different forces could have all been bundled together in the early universe. It sounds pretty great, right? So how come it's just a theory? Why haven't we seen any supersymmetric particles? The issue is that we expect supersymmetric particles to be pretty heavy, which in particle physics means they're hard to see. We try to find them by smashing other particles together near the speed of light and seeing what is spewed out in these collisions. But up until now, we haven't had enough energy to see supersymmetry. It's like we've been drawing the square with a pencil instead of a sharpie. The pencil isn't strong enough to bleed through, so when I flip the paper over, I can't see the other symmetry that might be there. That's why the Large Hadron Collider at CERN is so important. It's the biggest particle smasher that we've ever built. It also happens to be the largest machine humankind has ever built, so that's pretty cool. Other colliders are like a pencil, where the LHC, 
is like a sharpie. We think that it is strong enough for us to see evidence of supersymmetry. Currently, the physicists at CERN are working hard to try to find evidence of these new supersymmetric particles. So far, we haven't seen anything. That doesn't mean we're giving up. The search goes on. And there you have it, supersymmetry in a nutshell. Hopefully one day, with the help of avid young minds like yourself, we will finally be able to find evidence of this super theory. This has been a Jezup production. Thanks for watching.